Hello, hello. So I decided I want to go live again today because I got this whole new batch of books in and yeah, so much cool stuff. So I thought I'd get into this one. Where did I set my glasses? It's, it's so hot tonight, right? I wonder if the hearing is going to be okay. Hey, Genevieve, welcome back. Awesome. But yeah, I keep sweating, but that's okay, you know? <clears throat> so let's see how far we get into this. Seership, Guide to Soul Sight and the Magic Mirror and How We Use It by Pascal Beverly Randolph. It is um, a practical guide for those who aspire to develop the vision of the soul. And I got this really cool, this is like for a while, you know, like a, a really a hard, a really hard book to get. Hey, that way, welcome back. Um, but they've been reprinting it. And this one is like a really sweet, like it's got, it's, it's made with um, really cool font through the whole thing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so let's, um, let's read a little bit, see how far we get. Seership or soul sight, clairvoyance or somnambulic, I think that's how you say it. Yeah, the sam som somnambulic state. It's like hypnotism and sleep. Somnambulic vision. It's art and culture with rules for its attainment. I trust I may be pardoned if I make an attempt to rescue the subject of somnambulic vision from the charlatry of the day. In these days, clairvoyance, which is a natural power inherent in the race, is regarded as a sort of forbidden or rare wonder mixed up with mesmerism, fraud, circles, and so on, while it is also the garb under which more barefaced swindling is carried on than under any other one gift of God to civilized man. I hold it to be emphatically true that no curtain hides from view the spheres Elysian, save these poor shells of half-transparent dust, while all that blinds the spiritual vision is pure and hate and lust. Oh no, is pride and hate and lust. That makes better sense to me. <laughs> <clears throat> and I believe clairvoyance to be the birthright of every human being, that all will one day possess it, that children will be born so, that even now, coarse as we are, some of us, a great percentage of the people can develop it to a most surprising extent. In the first place, let it be distinctly understood that there are three sources of light, solar, planetary, planetary and astral adapted to material eyes and that independent of that every globe in space is cushioned upon the ether and that this ether is one vast billowy sea of magnetic light and is the media of an inner sense of sight and the whole mystery is at once cleared up and the claptrap of the charlatans at once exploded and exposed and thus this wonderful power is resolved into the mere sensitive ability to come and report with this vast ocean of inner light, which may be quite easily done, as well herein by briefly shown. All that is required is simply patience. <laughs> Clairvoyance is the art and power of knowing or, or co cognizing facts things and principles by methods totally distinct from those usually pursued in their attainment. I claim to have reduced it to a system and to have evolved science from hither um, heterogeneity, uh, genity, oh no, heterogeneity, heterogeneity, to have added a, to to have added new thought, new conception, open new fields of investigation, and to have discovered the central magnetic law underlying and subtending the evolutions of some somnambulic phenomena. A brief resume of which I herewith present. 
Okay, science from heterogeneity. Let's look it up. <laughs> hey, Prelly, welcome in. It's H E T E R O dash G E N E I T Y. I don't know why I, I'll get there here we go. Boom. Okay. So to row. Heterogeneity. 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 The quality or state of being diverse in character or content. Cool. Heterogeneity. 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 Badass. I love it. Okay. Hetero heterogeneity. Okay. Evolve science from heterogeneity to have added new thought, new concept, opened new fields of investigation, and to have discovered the central magnetic law underlying the subtent underlying at and sub subtending the evolutions of somnambulic phenomena, a brief resume of which I herewith present. We are approaching the termination of the first stage of civilization, our bidding farewell to many of its modes, moods, opinions, sentiments, thoughts, and procedures, and are entering upon a new epoch of human history and might, destined to develop powers in man. And then it says two, which is connected to this. It says the second age of man generally termed the Christian has passed the limbo of time and the third age, the, the manistic or the age of man has set in during this age, man's concept of his powers, duties, morality, and spirituality will change completely. Man will gradually come to accept his own personal responsibility for all his activities, whether of thoughts or acts with his will come about a change as regards his powers and potencies. And he will indeed become as one of the gods as he resumes the responsibilities to true virile manhood so will flow to him the rewards accruing to the strong the brave and the free this will mean for him first manhood ending in godhood and the immortalization of his being in the past age this has been the exception in the present age it will become general right Aw, oh, thank you so much. What a compliment. Thank you, Prelly. So, powers in man, now latent, mainly, but which will yet revolutionize the globe. On earth, man is greatest. Mind and... Oh, wait. On earth, man is greatest. Mind and greatest part of man and clair clairvoyance, the greatest part of mind. Clairvoyance depends upon a peculiar condition of the nerves and brain. It is compatible with the most robust health, albeit oft, oftenest resulting from disordered nerves. The discovery consists in the knowledge of the exact method, how, the precise, the precise spot where, and the proper times when to apply the specific mesmer, mesmeric 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 current to any given person in order to produce the coma and lucidity a careful following of the rules herein laid down is generally sufficient to enable the aspirant to attain his or her end experiments conducted by us have shown that when the thyroid gland is below normal in its activity it directly affects the brain and resultant mental activity furthermore that spiritual elevation of any department of man's nature is extremely difficult under these con conditions. This would also indicate that for man to be normal and non-criminal in his tendencies, it is essential that his endocrine system be functioning properly. properly. Our conclusions would be that to reform the world of man, we must endeavor to have all his glands in a healthy state. Then he will feel himself too much a man to do other than right and justly. Let reformers give heed to this thought 
and let us, first of all, establish institutions where professional reformers are examined and treated for glandular overactivity or inactivity. Damn, that's cool, right? Hey, Mr. Hugh, welcome back, right? <clears throat> yeah. At the start, let it be distinctly understood that fear, doubt, nervous agitation, coarse habits, or bad intent will retard success and may prevent it altogether. When a person cannot be mesmerized through the eye, head, or by reverse passes, success often will follow if clothes be wet with slightly vinegared water, just over the pit of the stomach and small of the back. If an operator acts, let his left hand cover the rear wet spot that has oh, the rear wet spot has right the front one while the gazing process continues as before. Reason? The brain is not the only seat of nervous power, and we can often reach and subdue it by, by and through the nerves, nervous matters, and ganglia situate along and within the backbone. Four. So cool, right? Oh, I missed three. Son of a gun. Okay, well, three's up here, which is talking about at the start, let it be distinctly understood that fear, doubt, nervous agitation, coarse habits, or bad intent, that's where three comes in, bad intent, and inclination, oh, an indication that if man seeks to attain the higher spiritual state, he must, first of all, redeem himself and free himself from the evils existing within his own house. Spiritualization cannot take place while the temple is filled with thieves and money changers. Example, evil and destructive thoughts and intentions. So then when we came to four, we're talking about the backbone, the ganglia, and our nerves. The two major nerve centers in the human body are found located in the pituitary gland, in the head, and in the base of the spinal column. It is extremely difficult to stimulate the pituitary gland, but modern physicians have leaned or have learned to normalize and dilate the rectal center and thus reach the pituitary gland, which helps to normalize mind and body in a sense. Spiritualize man. To attain clairvoyance, the pituitary gland must be functioning normally. If tractors or magnets are used, their points should be placed just as would be the mesmerizer's hand, and the experiment be continued as before. At first, Clairvoyance, like any movement, nervous or muscular, requires a special effort, but it soon becomes automatic, involuntary, mechanical. Keep your design constantly before you, and your soul and inner senses will make grooves for themselves, and continue the move in them as cars on rails or wheels in ruts. That's in bold. Hey, Invisible Wings, welcome, welcome. Let your groove be clairvoyance. Lucidity, lucidity is no gift, but a universal possibility common to the human race. Idiots can, can do... Oh, wait, wait. Oh, no. Idiots... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Idiots can and do have it. It is latent or still mind power and can be brought to the surface in a majority of cases. Um, uh, Omnia vincit labor. Omni. All vincit labor. I don't know. Should we look that up? Let's look it up. Omnia vincit labor exclamation point um um inia vincit labor mm, definition and meaning Labor conquers all. Bam. Cool. 
All mental action comes through nervous action. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. All mental action comes through nervous action. But in these cases, the result must be reached outside our usual mental habitudes. Mental habitudes and paths. Cool. Is it like habits and attitudes? Habitudes. Cool. Or habitats. Let's look it up. Habitudes and paths. Back. Habitude. A habitual tendency or way of being. Habitude. Habitude. <laughs> Habitude. Cool. Habitude. Yeah, all right. The habit of an attitude. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Our usual mental habitudes and paths. The person who attempts to reach clairvoyance and gets discouraged after a few trials does not merit the power. If you begin, either by agents or mesmerists, keep right on. Every experiment lands you one step nearer su success, and that too, whether you aim at psychometry, lucidity, or any one of the 50 phases or grades of occult power. Remember that physical conditions influence, modify, and determine mental states, whether these be normal or recondite and mysterious, recondite, recondite and mysterious. Nor forget that pure blood gives pure power. If your blood is foul with scrofula, pork fat, rum, veneral, suspended menses, by nursing, cold, or Perchance, pregnancy, don't attempt clairvoyance till you are free from it. Artists prepare their paints. You must prepare your body. Else no good picture comes. No lucidity follows. Sound lungs, stomach, kidneys, liver, brain, blood, heart, urinal vessels, womb, and pelvic apparatus are not absolute essentials, but good preparatives. Above all, the blood must be purified, vacated of its poisons, Rumus or rooms. Dang it. I should know how to say that. Um, alkalines, acids in excess and be toned up to concert pitch. If you would enjoy the music of the spheres and know beyond your outer knowing food, digestion, drinks, sleep must all be attained to attended to. Son of a gun. Where's five. Okay. It's right here. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Mesmeric subjects at first become quite passional. The devil's bridge. Look out so you do not fall through it, for true clairvoyance is coincident only with normal appetites normally sated. And that's linked to five. It is to be constantly borne in mind that the initiate is not a nihilist. He has learned that all things that exist have some use and that generally the law is temperate use of all things. Excess of none, irrespective of how good a thing may be in itself. That which itself is good may become destructive when abused. Right use, not non-use, is the law. Yeah. Excess destroys it. Every passion, except the grosser, has a normal sphere. Clairvoyance is qualitative and quantitative, like all other mental forces. It is limited, fragmentary, incomplete in all, because we are all imperfect. But no other being can occupy you, uh, can occupy your or my ground, or be so great in our respective directions as we are. No one exactly is like us. We precisely like nobody. We are like the world. Green spots and deserts. Arid here, frozen there. Fertile in one spot, sterile in another. Therefore, we should cultivate our special loves. Clairvoyant vigor, vigor demands attention to the law. Quote, the eternal equation of vital vigor is rest equals exercise. End quote. Remember this and retain your power. 
Clairvoyance is an affair of the air. Food, drink, love, passion, light, sleep, health, rest, sunshine, joy, music, labor, exercise, lungs, liver, blood, quite as much as of mesmerism and magnetic coma, for all mental operations are physically conditioned. Six, we are all familiar with the biblical in inculcation, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added unto you. In this age of the beginning of spiritual light, another precept should become equally familiar to all. Direct your efforts towards health, a balanced mental, physical condition, and all things shall become possible to you. Ill health is unbalanced, and there cannot be true spirituality where there is not a true balance. Remember this. Exclamation point. Where is that six? There it is, right at the end of that. Clairvoyant is an, clairvoyance is an art like any other. The elements exist, but to be useful must be systemized. It has hitherto been pursued, not rationally, but empirically. As a blind habit, a sort of gymnastics, a means to swindle people, and scarce ever under intelligent guidance like the logical or mathematical or musical faculties of the soul, albeit more valuable than either, and like them too, subject to the laws of growth. It is far-reaching and once attained, though the road is difficult, amply replays, amply replays, repays, amply repays the time and labor spent. It has been the study of my life and that knowledge which enables me to demonstrate the laws governing it and by which it may be developed, also enables me to understand and impart these, which attend its aberrant phenomena. This mystic ground was hitherto this mystic ground has hitherto been the prolific hotbed of a host of noxious, dangerous superstitions and quackeries, and I believe my own is the first attempt to reclaim it to rational investigation. Clairvoyance is a generic term employed to express various degrees and modes of perception, whereby one is enabled to cognize and know facts, things, and principles, or to contact certain knowledges without the use and independent of the ordinary avenues of sense. It is produced or attained in various degrees by different methods and is of widely diverse grades and kinds as a psychometry or nervous sensitiveness, wherein the subject does not see at all, but comes in magnetic contact with first the peculiar material emanations or sphere given off from every person or object in existence and is analogous to the power whereby a dog finds his master in a crowd, or a hound hunts down a fugitive and pursues him unerringly from having smelt a garment once worn by that fugitive. By this sense of feeling, persons come and report with others present, distant, dead, or alive, and when the sensitiveness is great, are enabled to sympathetically feel, hence describe, that person's physical, social, moral, Amative and detect diseases. Oh, amative and intellectual condition, and in extraordinary cases, can discern and detect diseases, both of mind, uh, affections of body, without, however, being qualified to treat or cure said aberrations. Every city in the land abounds with persons claiming to be clairvoyants, who are not so in any sense whatever, but are to a greater or less extent mere sensitives at best, but in by far the majority of, of cases, such are rank impostors, fortune tellers, and charlatans, who eke out a living by dint of a very little good guessing and a great deal of tall lying. The majority are females of lax principles who keep a lounge and drawn curtains, uh, pestilent vampires, redolent of filth, moral, intellectual, and physical, who are loaded with the ex exuvie, exuvie of death, and charge a man or woman with the very vapor of ruin itself. Seven. 
The sincere and faithful student will not consult with professional fortune tellers, clairvoyants, astrologers, or others of that ilk, for to do so frequently means death to all his ideals and the possibilities of attaining soul illumination. B. Psychometry can be deepened into absolute perception by carefully noting the first and strongest impressions resulting from contact with a person, letter, or object, and afterward ascertaining the correctness of the verdict come to. A little careful experimentation will develop good results and demonstrate that clairvoyance is an attainable qualification with proper patience and active effort. C. Intuition. The highest quality of the human mind is latent in most people, developable in nearly all, is trainable, and when active, is the highest kind of clairvoyance. It is the effortless, instantaneous perception of facts, principles, events, and things. The rule for its promotion is simply when it tells a tale to test when it tells a tale to test it at once. In a brief time, the perceptions will grow clearer, stronger, more full, frequent, and free. D. The difference between clairvoyance, feeling, or psychometry, and intuition are these. The first sees, the second feels, the third knows instantly. Hmm... In our, in our ordinary state, we see through a glass darkly. In clairvoyance, we see with more or less distinctness. In psychometry, we feel with greater or less intensity. And in intuition, we leap to results at a single bound. There are hundreds who imagine they possess all or one of these faculties or qualifications and arrogate much importance merely because the idea have made a strong impression on their minds or perhaps they have been one or two ver they have seen one or two visions or spectral sparks or flashes such are what they claim to be only in the wish they need training for clairvoyance is a thing of actual system rule and law and whoever would have it in its completeness or complexity must conform to the science thereof if they expect good results to ensue. E. The actual perception is of various kinds and degrees. It does not require brilliant talents for its develop development, for many seers are inferior morally, organically, spiritually, and intellectually. Yet the higher, more brilliant, and finely constituted a person is, the higher and nobler is the clairvoyance they will develop. Some subjects never get beyond the power to hunt up stolen or lost property. Others stop at the halfway house of telling forges, fortunes. A number reach the scientific plane, while but a few attain that magnificent sweep of intellect and vision that leaps the world's barriers force the gates of death, and reveals in the sublime mysteries of the universes. The purer the subject, the better the faculty, is the rule. Goodness, not mere knowledge, is power. Remember this. F. No two persons' clairvoyance is precisely alike. Each one has a personal idiosyncrasy that invariably determines his or her specialty, and whatever that specialty may chance to be should be encouraged, for in that he or she will excel and in no other. The attempt to force nature will be so much lost time and wasted effort. I say this after an experience of 20 years. I had a specialty for the occult, and an early friend whom I loved tenderly, became unhappy by reason of an accident that, for ten years, rendered him utterly wretched, wretched and miserable. He lost all taste for life because of his injury and its effects, and was often tempted to self-murder, and an estrangement sprung up between himself and wife. One of the most beautiful and accomplished ladies in America, a more deplorable wreck, was never seen. The wife became morbid, and they used to visit mediums and clairvoyants in hopes of a cure. At that time, 1853, I had a mesmeric subject and examined for two French physicians in New York, doctors Toutain and 
Bergevin. Here I first saw and prescribed for the man who afterward became my personal friend. Himself and lady were kind to me, and kindness won my undying love. I have had so little of it in this world, have so often been robbed, plundered, and traduced by so-called friends that when a real one appeared, I hailed it as the Greeks hailed the sea. We sat 118 times for my friend and his wife, searching for a means of cure, made many costly experiments, and finally were rewarded by a grand discovery. And so I say to all clairvoyant aspirants, aspirants, adopt a specialty. That's nine. Crap, where was eight? Damn it, they're so little. Oh, his doctors. Behind the doctors, it says eight. The two French physicians belonged to the fraternity of the Rosy Cross of France at the time, and to whom Randolph was given an introduction by the order in France while on his first visit there. The connections thus formed ultimately resulted in his becoming chief of the Rosicrucians. And then nine, which is after, and so I say to all clairvoyant aspirants, adopt a speciality. Nine. <clears throat> To, to be successful in the process of spiritualization, it is essential that the acolyte should carefully examine himself, find out just what he wants to do or seeks to become, and then bend all his energies towards that end or toward that end. The Council of Immersion, oh, no, the Council of Emerson, quote, hitch your wagon to a star, end quote, here applies. Set a star or goal ahead and then push toward or push forward toward the attainment of that goal. Tanya, welcome in. Awesome. Oh. <clears throat> G. When a mesmeric circle self-magnetizing or what I do not advise, varied experiment for clairvoyance bids fair to become a success and the subject sees flashes, sparks, white clouds, rolling balls of light vapor or is partially lucid, the tendency of the mind should be carefully noted and the future direction or the power or faculty be fully decided on, sought for, aimed at, and strictly, persistently, faithfully followed until a splendid and never-to-be-doubted triumph and success crown your efforts. If you intend to examine and prescribe for disease, quote, will throwing, end quote, or to read people, to hunt up lost goods, detect thieves, make business examinations, in short, any special thing, cultivate that thing and no other, else you will spoil your sight, dim your light, and become a sort of jack-at-all-trades, master of none, which actually ends, is far better than a master of one, which I love. <laughs> Thoughts. Yeah. Because they say don't put all your eggs in one basket, but I think maybe we should. <laughs> to an extent. Well, I mean, it's all or nothing, right? You cannot excel in finding lost property, reading the love life of amorous people, and also describe and prescri prescribe for sick folks. No, the rule is one thing and that thing well. Let the rest alone. All right. I like that. Some good advice. Hey, Kelly, welcome. Welcome. <clears throat> Again, people are too impatient. 10. Impatience is one of the most destructive qualities of the human mind. To become impatient will forever bar one from the spiritual or soul realms. One should be dissatisfied with one's progress as this acts as an incentive to greater efforts, but impatience is of a quality altogether harmful. The sincere student will make every effort to be patient and refuse under any and all circumstances to become discouraged even though his mental skies may appear as black as the darkest night. He who refuses to surrender is certain to succeed. Again, people are too impatient. 
They push a sonam, uh, som, somnambule. They push a somnambule too fast and too far. Be careful if you look for success. Go short journeys at a slow pace if you expect to hold out. While learning, uh, while laboring for the French physicians and others in New York, I frequently not only examined 50 cases of disease a day, but made all sorts of explorations as in many different directions, the consequence of which was a chronic lassitude, dyspensia, angularity, and great irritability of temper by reason of the unwise step and resultant nervousness. This is such good advice. Damn, it's great. Consolidate. Yeah. H. There are various kinds as well as degrees of clairvoyance, natural, intellectual, medical, eth ethereal, and divine, social, practical, and purely mental, or a clear seeing of material forms, lucidity of mind, generally, lucidity of special cerebral organs, lucidity upon certain points, as medicine, prevoyance, religion, philosophy, science, logic, art, love, etc. There are many pretenders to all these, nine in ten of whom are rank impostors. There is a clairvoyance of introspection, inspection, and projection, and these have their appropriate fields in the past, present, and the future, all of which are easily developed and perfected. E There is the common som somnamb somnambulic or mesmerically induced lucidity, 11. This is the method that was pursued so successfully by the master in the training of, Mar of Marie Corelli. And under these conditions, her first five books were written. It is needless to say that the morality of the operation must be above reproach. Hmm. Delaney, welcome, welcome. Hmm. It also comes through the coma or trance, however produced, and yet it is by no means necessary that the patient be fully entranced in order to produce the distinct lucidity. I know capital seers who never were entranced, who never lost their consciousness for a moment. But such cases are far from being common or usual. This first kind of vision exhausts itself on material objects alone, a mere perception of things without penetrating power. The next stage it reaches is that of the mind reading. In 1853-4-5, the writer hereof had his power to a remarkable degree. In 1853, 54, and 55, the writer hereof... <laughs> had his power to a remarkable degree, used to play cards, chess, and read books, blindfold. And this power caused him to be invited to visit Paris, where he exhibited, to be, exhibited it to, to the astonishment of the savants and his own glorification. Practically, the thing is useless. There is a perception, one grade higher than this last, which enables the subject to come and report with the surface and essence of things, as a tree, man, woman, herbs, etc. And it grows till the seer beholds and explains somewhat of the penetralia of things. And it culminates in the condition wherein the mind, leaping all the barriers of the outer senses and world, sees and knows things altogether beyond their ranges and approaches the awful realms of positive spirit. Special cerebral organs become lucid, soon succeeded by an entire illumination of the brain. This is a grand, a sublime, a holy degree, for the subject sees, senses, feels, knows by a royal power, is in report with a thousand knowledges. A step further, a step toward the subject is in harmony 
with both the upper and lower universes. He or she, thenceforth, is a power in the world. All clairvoyants may not claim genius, but all true genius is clairvoyant. Mere talents are dry leaves, tossed up and down by gusts of passion and scattered and swept away. But genius lies in the bosom of memory and gratitude at her feet. I feel like I missed a number. I did. Okay, so special cerebral organs is 12. <clears throat> Special cerebral organs become lucid, soon superseded by an elite, oh, an entire illumination of the brain. So that's the 12. Our experiments and tests have shown that the two organs involved, now known as glands, are first and most important, the pituitary, and second, and hardly less involved in the process, the thyroid. Damn, Bean, this stuff is so cool. I, very few persons will fail who strictly conform to the general rules here laid down, and fewer still who follow the special plans determined upon. As a rule, I find it safe to declare that in every 100 cases, 75 can become partly lucid, 63 can become sensitive, 45 can reach the second, 32 the third, 14 the fourth, 5 the fifth, and two, the highest degree of clairvoyance their peculiar organization is capable of attaining. Of 100 men, 56 can become seers. Of 200 women, 180 can become so. Ha! Magnetic clairvoyance is that induced by holding the head close to the open horns of a large and powerful horseshoe magnet. It may be suspended from the ceiling and held to the head lying down, so when let go it will spring away or come in contact with its armature. A nail will do so as to close the circuit. A quartz crystal is nearly as good for this purpose as a horseshoe magnet, but I prefer a bar magnet to either. Ooh, speaking of crystals, I just got this new Lemurian twin azestialite. From Madagascar. Ooh. I haven't meditated with it yet. Ooh, let's flip this. Okay. Crystals. You like... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Cheaper. I prefer a bar magnet to either. <clears throat> Mesmeric circles differ from all others in that, to be proper, all who are in one, all who are in one, should be insulated. The chairs and tables and footstools should rest on glass knobs made on purpose. In these circles, the chances are ten to one that some will go off into the mesmeric mesmeric coma on the first trial. The circle must wish, will, desire, and favorable results are almost sure to follow. Have patience if they do not. I once, I once dated um, a mesmer for a while. <laughs> it was weird. He was nice. I just remember all the jokes my cousin used to make, though, because <laughs> he was like a magician, you know. Now you see it. Now you don't. All, all kinds of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Note, all clairvoyants should, to be useful, successful, and enduring, cultivate the habit of deep breathing. For all brain power depends upon lung power, nor can be continued, nor, nor, can, uh, nor can continued ability exist if this be neglected. 13. Singing. Playing the clarinet. Hmm. 13. One of the reasons why the authentic secret schools give their first attention to the instruction of the neophyte in the ancient occult methods of breathing, a method which has never failed when cons uh, conscientiously followed and faithfully, regularly and consistently practiced. Irregular now and then practice avails nothing. Right. <laughs> Man, it's so hot. I'm sweating so much. <laughs> it's okay. I'm what I'm sparkling. I'm glistening. All clairvoyants should feed on the best things attainable. Again, all clairvoyants must be great must use great caution in matters of sex. Abstinence is good, for an error in that direction is fatal to clear vision or its per perpetuity when possessed. I am told by a friend of mine in Paris, the best male seer in France, that carelessness in the respect cost him the loss of his vision for a period of seven months. If the party desires to develop sensitivities uh, sensitiveness only with a view to becoming a psychometrist this caution does not apply with such force if a person has to ask me it is best to try to be a clairvoyant or a good psychometrist i should unhesitatingly say the latter by all means for it is more easily attained and to say the least is quite as useful if money making and tests are the objects sought to be gained Damn, being... I think this was written in like 1887 or something like that. This one just says 2008. First, no, no, okay. First published in 1930 by the Confederation of Initiates, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Copyright not renewed. Oh. Hmm. So So he he gave that piece of advice and that's connected to 14 which says one having attained clairvoyance cannot always close his visions to things it is not desirable to see or which may bring about a morbid mental condition for a time. This is the one fault with clairvoyant powers. The psychometrist does not have contend with this. Yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. The things you see the messages I get a lot of messages through sound though and pictures mm. where's that 14 number there it is by all means, for it is mere, more easily attained and, to say the least, is quite as useful if money-making and tests are the objects sought to be gained. Okay, so yeah, I read that. Shit. In all mesmeric experiments, individual or collective, very few become, at first trial, true hypnotic subjects, and some can never be, owing to peculiar... 
peculiarities of organization. The matter can be tested in a variety of ways, as, for instance, the usual passes may be reversed, or the doubtful subject may look steadily at a speck on the wall for six minutes. If drowsy at the end of that time, and the eyeballs have a tendency to roll up, the person is a subject, and all that is required is patience. Or breathe rapidly, forcibly, for 90 seconds. If it makes you dizzy, you are a subject and can enter the somnambulic state in any one of a dozen ways. This same operation, often repeated, is almost certain to produce coma. This makes me think of Wim Hof. And if done while lying down, in connection with the horseshoe magnet operation, will prove successful in enabling the person to see without eyes. In all cases, the room should be quite dark. Asterisk. Where does it go? I don't see an asterisk. I don't know. If, at the end of a few minutes, sparks, flashes, streaks of quick and lingering light are seen, or phosphorus clouds float before the face, then one of two things is immediately probable. First, that the party be that the party by continuance and repetition can be clairvoyant. Or second, if not too scary, these clouds and sparks may resolve themselves into beautified forms of friends long gone but unlost. Wow. Forty-eight out of fifty mesmeric experiments fail because the operator wastes, not saves, diffuses, instead of focalized, the mesmeric force that streams from the eyes and fingers. Rules. Subject and operator must be of opposite sex, temperament, complexion, size, stature, hair, eyes, build, and so on, th throughout, in order to bring about the best results without reference to all the talk about positive and negative, which is mostly nonsense. For I have known a sweet miss only six years old to thoroughly and effectively mesmerize her great burly uncle, a man capable of knocking a bull down with one stroke of his ponderous fist, and who was one of the roughest sea tyrants that ever trod a quarter deck, and yet the little lady rendered him not only helpless, but clairvoyant by repeatedly manipulating his head while he held her on his lap in his daily calls. She witnessed a few experiments, believed she could do the same, tried it on four times, and accomplished it in great glee on the fifth attempt. But the greatest miracle of all, miracle of all was that the captain's nature became entirely changed, and today... A better or a gentler man does not sail out of New York Harbor. Concentrate your attention on a single point in the subject's head. Keep it there. Ooh, this is, tr this is tricky. I don't know about all that. Concentrate your attention on a single point in the subject's head. Keep it there. Do not let your thoughts wander. Gaze steadily at it and it alone, gently waving your head and hands over it from right to left, left to right. Repeat, repeat the process at the same time, daily for one hour till the sleep is thoroughly induced. When it is, and you are perfectly satisfied of the fact, you will be strongly tempted to ask questions. Don't do it. Resist it. Deepen the slumber, the slumber, in seven sittings after perfect insensibility ensues. The eighth time you ask a few questions and but a few, lead the subject slowly, tenderly, holily, gently along, step by step, one subject at a time, and that subject thoroughly, not forgetting what I have said. Shoot, I missed a ton of numbers, I think. 15 goes to scary. Whoever is possessed of fear should not attempt to take this system of training. Fear is the terror of the threshold and successfully prevents the neophyte from entering the temple. Yeah. 16. Three methods taught by Dr. Randolph were the ones when 
in vogue in France. They were taught by the Brothers of the Light, uh, Brothers of Light, of which Elpheus Levy was the master, and which order was at one time known as the Magnetists. It's a good name. Okay, so uh, lead. Okay, lead the subject slowly, tenderly, holily, gently along, step by step, one subject at a time, and that subject thoroughly, not forgetting what I have said about specialties. Hmm. So juicy. All right, we're going to end on J. Persons ambitions, uh, persons ambitious to become clairvoyant must not forget that a full habit, amorous pleasures, high living and mental excitement, all are disqualifications. The entire diet must be changed. The linen often, the skin, especially the head and hair, must be kept scrupulously clean. And to ensure speedy success, the food should be very light. Fruit and milk may, may be freely used, but no chocolate, fat, oysters, pastry, and but very little sugar. Nor should the person fail continually to think, wish, and will the end aimed at. Soft and plaintive music is a capital adjunct. Wow. I don't know if you can get this. Oh, um, actually, I think you can download this on Google for free. I think I might have accidentally done it after I purchased it. Yeah. Shit. So juicy. What time is it? Yeah, I got I got to call it even though I don't want to. I'm sweating balls. I have to go and sit by the by the air and I got to work in the morning, too. So. Man, you alls, this is so juicy. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we ended with Jay, and I'm gonna. Oh, wait, I think I found a little stash back here. I did from one of the, all the ones I lose. Hey, DK's, welcome. I'm just closing it up, my friend. But damn, Pascal Beverly Randolph. I got a man, got a, a couple of his books actually. But also, I got um. Oh yeah, I'm so excited to read his book. Um, you um, I think it's Ulysses, the history of love. It's wonderful. It's wondrous magic, chemistry, rules, laws, moods, and rationale. Being the third revelation of soul and sex. Also, a reply to why is man immortal. The solution of the Darwin problem, an entirely new theory. Euless. Oh my gosh. Right. I love you, Tanya. Thank you too. And also, um, I got Electric Body, Electric Health by Eileen Day McCusick. Oh my gosh, she she posted tonight and she's doing a um a sacred geometry or numerology post or something like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Plus on Tuesday, I'm doing a, I'm doing a class with her. Oh my God. Just like a little, um, like over the interwebs biofield anatomy thing. Oh my gosh. Because, oh my gosh, look what else came in my, um, Hey, where's the start? Here it is. My tuning forks came. My omnivos tuning forks came. My cat was really weird about it when I. Oh, it's okay. And it's soft. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, I am calling this, but let's look at these things. We'll bring a couple. Where'd I put the puck? Right here? Yeah. So here's the puck that came with it. It's a hockey puck, you know? Rubber. Jackie, hey, I'm just calling it, but I got so much cool stuff in at, at these books and these things. Um, I wonder how it's... Oh, I can't wait to hear the recording back. It's 
so interesting. The way it feels. Okay, let's try. That was a that was poor. This is 174. I got the Solfeggio kit. Hey, Matt, man. Awesome. Good to see you, buddy. I wonder how this has come through. It's so crazy, too. Like, when you hold it right up to your ear. Like, it's like... Oh, it's so loud. And I mean, just the way it feels, they're so light. I had no idea they were going to be that light, even though I know they were like alloy aluminum. And I know aluminum is not heavy, but I just didn't expect it to be that light. Let's ring each one and then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to call it. It's cool too, like when I put it on the desk, um, it makes a different noise. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. <laughs> I'm glossy. I don't know if, if I'm really doing it right yet. Ooh, that sounds better. Are you guys able to hear this? Is it coming through? Ooh, yeah, like I, I tried to do like... Oh man, and like, they're so cool. Like the way they feel, the vibrating. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, like the vibrating in that um, Journeys Out of the Body. Hot damn. That is something. That is juicy. Fuck. There we go. It's so cool too when, um, I'll do it with the next one. Um, when you twist it, now that I figured out this thing, I couldn't get it to move, it's, it's genius. All oh, right, I feel like I just flicked that with my finger. I do. It's so interesting when you pull them real close to your ears. It's oscillating, right? I can't wait to get weighted ones too, but I mean, I don't even know how to use these ones yet, really. I mean, or rather, yeah, I guess I mean what I said, but I love that I have these and I'm good. I love them. Plus, I'm, I'm excited to learn more about how to really use them, right? You know? I like to feel it on my temple. I know that I'm, I know <laughs> it sort of looks really weird, but <laughs> I do though. <laughs> when I first got them, I was like putting them all over my body and just like testing them out. Awesome. 
Two more. Two more. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wow. Just like one clear tone. Wild. This is the last one. So cool. Oh my gosh, they're just awesome. Yeah, this 170, uh, 174 ones, this one that Eileen Day McCusick says that um, she used for her full like healing session on some of them, like for the whole body. I'm going to be like um, Edward Scissorhands, but like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm done playing with these forks now. <laughs> I love them though. <laughs> Shit, it's so hot. Okay. <laughs> Son of a gun. These things are so cool. Isn't sound cool? Isn't, oh man, isn't life something else? Yeah. Dang, I love yous. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and getting into some of that really cool book. Pascal Beverly Ru Randolph. Rudolph? Randolph? Randolph. All right. I love yous. I will talk to you so soon. I'm sure sooner than later. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe. <laughs> so until the next time, I, I love you. I believe in you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Mwah! Or whenever you find us. Thank you. Thank you. I love you.